Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our second case, our second example of how to find the general solution. And since they also gave us the initial values, the exact solution of this original differential equation. Now here's the example we're going to be working with. And the assumption is that b squared minus 4ac is going to be equal to 0, which means there's only going to be one root in the solution. Well, first we're going to divide everything by 2, which makes it a little bit easier. So we have y double prime minus 8y prime plus 16y is equal to 0. The characteristic equation will look as follows. r squared minus 8r plus 16 is equal to 0. And using the quadratic formula, we can say that r, looking r, oh, that's not, there we go, is equal to minus b, which would be a plus 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is minus 8 squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. And simplifying this, we get r is equal to 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 64 divided by 2. And then notice, of course, 64 minus 64 is 0, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So the root, in this case, is a single root equal to 4. Which means the general equation or the general solution to that differential equation is as follows. We can say that y as a function of t is equal to c1 e to the root times t plus c2 times t times e to the root times t. And plugging in what we know, we know that r is 4, so this becomes y as a function of time is equal to c1 e to the 4t plus c2 times t times e to the 4t. And this is then the general solution to this original differential equation. Now, since we've been given the initial values at 0 for y and y prime, we want to be able to use that information to find the constant c1 and c2, which means we need to find the derivative of this. And so y prime of t is equal to the derivative of this, which is 4c1 e to the 4t plus c2 times the derivative of this, which is a product, so it's the first times the derivative of the second, so times 4e to the 4t, plus the second, e to the 4t, times the derivative of the first, which is 1. So now that we have y prime as well, we can now go ahead and evaluate both the function y and y prime at the initial conditions. So y, when t is equal to 0, is equal to, over here we have c1, e to the 0 plus c2 times, but since there's a t there, it'll be 0 times e to the 0, which means this whole term will go to 0, and that is equal to 2. Since this goes to 0, and e to the 0 is 1, this then concludes that c1 is equal to 2. That was rather easy. Now, to find the other constant c2, we're going to use y prime evaluated at t equals 0. So we have y prime, when t is equal to 0, is equal to, well, that would be 4c1 e to the 0 plus c2 times, well, this will become 0 times 4e to the 0 plus e to the 0. And that is equal to negative 1. All right, now let's substitute everything that we know. C1 is equal to 2, so we have 4 times 2 plus, this is 0, and we have C2 times e to the 0, which is 1, times 1, and that equals negative 1. So we have 8 on the left side. When we move to the other side, we get minus 8, so that means that C2 is equal to minus 8 minus 1 or minus 9. So now we have C1, we have C2, we're now ready to write the final exact solution to the differential equation. y is a function of time is equal to c1, which is 2, e to the 4t, plus c2, and actually it's going to be minus, because c2 is a negative number, so it's minus 9 times t 
times e to the 4t. And here is the exact solution to that original differential equation. And that's how it's done in the case where the b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0.